Flat out fam, welcome to the video. If you watched this video here a while ago and you watched all the way to the end, I gave away some uh, hats courtesy of Jay Leno's Garage. I'm taking them now to UPS to ship them out. Um, the thing is, if you didn't watch to the end of the video, you missed the giveaway. And the reason that the giveaway is at the end, because it's, uh, well, it's by design. I want you to watch all the way to the end and only people who watch to the end get rewarded. So. If you are one of the hat winners, your package is now in the mail. It cost me $57 to pack and ship those hats. Guys, welcome back to another flat out detailing video. I'm Jay, We've got Andy here with us today. And today we're gonna go through a comprehensive step by step video on how to wash uh, any car that you have, obviously. But today we're gonna be using this F80 BMW M3, absolute weapon. It's got some really nice Brixton forged wheels on it that we have to be super careful with. So we're gonna show you what products and what processes we use to ensure that we can get this thing clean and protected without introducing any kind of damage or swirls. So being in Las Vegas, we're in an incredibly dusty environment and sneak peek, we are gonna have some other products that kind of combat that dust coming out in the future. So if you're not subscribed, I suggest you do so now so you don't miss out on that. But uh, dust and things of that nature land on the paint and this being such a beautiful black finish, um, any kind of uh, dust that's then rubbed with a towel using only a detail spray with no lubricity in it, for instance, can introduce swirl marks or scrapes onto the paint. So uh, we're gonna go through exactly how we clean and protect this, especially it being a dark colored car. I know you've seen us wash a lot of white cars, uh, so it's hard to tell, but like I said, we wanna keep this one protected. The second thing that we need to be overly concerned with is the wheels. These Brixton Forge wheels are custom made. They're about $8,000 a piece, oh, well, for a set of four. So uh, we wanna be really careful that we're not spraying anything on these wheels that's gonna introduce any kind of etching or any kind of damage. So uh, we're gonna go over that. And then also, kind of a, kind of a fun thing is, we, uh, we got these. So basically, a lot of the times what happens with the hose is as you're pulling the hose around the car, it'll be, get caught between the, uh, the road surface and the tire. So we picked up these little rollers, and they're actually really nice. So when you pull the hose, it gives you a, uh, a rolling actuation uh, so you don't get stuck and caught up in the car and then have your hose slapping the bottom of your bumper. And if you have a carbon fiber lip, potentially cracking it. There'll be a link to this and the other products we're using in the description below if you guys have any questions. Uh, let's get right into it. Always start with the wheels first. The reason for that is is because they're generally the most dirty, they've got the most contamination and the most um, iron in them from the brake pads that have been transferred onto the rotors and then onto parts of the wheel. So we always want to get that off first so none of that splashes up onto the rest of the paintwork. Next we just want to do a cursory rinse of the rim to get any kind of big abrasion off before we start agitating it with our wheel brushes and solution. First thing we use is the Jay Leno's Garage wheel cleaner. What we really like about this is it actually changes color. You can see there on the brake rotor it's purple. It's hard to see on the wheels because they're dark colors but um, it actually changes color to, to show you that it's activated. As I said earlier, agitation is the name of the game. You want to agitate this, uh, these contaminations, these brake dusts and irons off of the wheel. Simply spraying them down with a pressure washer does help, and that is a good, obviously, first step. But they're all going to just basically dry back in place. What it does is it cleans that rubber. It takes away kind of any dust particles that have embedded into the pores of the tire any kind of discoloration caused by the sun and or the road. Again, you just want to use a wheel brush that you may have laying around available from your favorite detailing supply to agitate that dirt off of the tire.
So you've seen us now rinse the car off. We used our MTM foam cannon to uh, basically provide that first layer of lubricity. Uh, the Jay Leno's Garage Vehicle Wash comes with, I think about a 7% wax content. So it gives a, a good kind of water repellent, but also gives us a nice lubricity um, to use the wash mitt to then agitate the rest of that dirt off. A couple of points that you wanna make sure that you follow when using a wash mitt. First of all, you'll see Andy using the two bucket system. The bucket that is blue, he's using to essentially rinse the dirt off of the wash mitt. It's got a grit guard in the bottom that we're twisting to get any kind of debris off of the wash mitt. We then dunk it into our second bucket or the clean bucket. What that does is give us a nice clean wash mitt to then put onto the vehicle surface. You always wanna make sure that you are basically following the direction of the wind is kind of what they say. So obviously as we're driving, the wind goes this way. So we wanna make sure that we're keeping a consistent level of, um, a consistent stroke along the vehicle and not rubbing it like we're doing wax on, wax off. If you're gonna create any kind of damage or you're gonna introduce any swirls to your paint, this is really the main place that you're gonna do it. So you wanna be super careful when uh, performing these. If you need to spend a couple extra dollars on a better wash mitt, uh, we use one from Jay Leno's Garage, but they're available from all kinds. The rag company has really nice ones as well. Um, those kind of, the, the noodle ones that they call, I'll put a picture up that you get at AutoZone. Probably would stay away from those because debris. it does trap debris and that grit guard doesn't always get it out. finish up with the wash mitt, I'm gonna show you something exciting that I think every garage should feature. This is the spotless water system from CI Spotless. Basically what it does is you run your city water into the back of it. There's a resin that you buy that you place into this canister and then it obviously filters the pH. It makes your city water the correct pH level to use this system. Um, technically, if you use this, you wouldn't have to dry the vehicle per se, or if it did dry, it wouldn't be as big of a deal. That hard water wouldn't be on it. So we use this, we still dry the vehicle, but we use this to rinse all the time. If we're just doing a quick wash, then obviously we'll just rinse the vehicle with this, give it a quick dry. But since we're doing a, a full in-depth wash today, we're gonna be using this and then taking further protection steps and using uh, Jay Leno's Garage Evaporate. But these are absolutely critical. They range from, I think, 90 to $250, depending on the capacity. Um, and then the resin that you buy lasts about maybe three or four months, and it's about $45 for the pack. So a great investment for an at-home detailer. <clears throat> you can see now that we've rinsed the car, all the suds, you wanna make sure that all the suds are gone. You don't want any kind of soap or any kind of uh, product drying on your paintwork. Now, we're gonna be using kind of a new product from Jay Leno's Garage um, to dry the vehicle and in the drying process, but the car is a little bit too wet. So for the Jay Leno's Garage Evaporate, you want a little bit of moisture, but uh, if we leave it like this, the towel will become saturated with water instantly. So what we're gonna do is first use a leaf blower to uh, get off a majority <laughs> of the water and then go to the Jay Leno's Garage Evaporate. this product before it's the Jay Leno's garage evaporate we did a full review on kind of the Jay Leno's garage product line but we didn't go very into depth with this which is what we're gonna do today so as we talked about we blew off most of the water but you can see there's a still a little bit of soap scum left over even though we were incredibly careful um, with our process with our rinse like I said you want to make sure that all the soap scum is off so 
Um, a lot of people use a detail spray. We actually prefer to use evaporate um, because what it basically does is it leaves, again, a lubri lubrication layer between the paint and the drying towel. However, as you see, this one's got like a chalky kind of appearance to it. That's because it leaves behind an incredible shine and an additional layer of protection. And anytime you're dealing with paint, you want to layer protection as much as possible. Rather than work down into the paint, you want to build up. So uh, essentially, like I said, there's still some drops of water here. There's still some soap scum left over. So you can either prime the towel. We've already primed the towel. So I'm just going to spray a little bit on here. And then using the same technique, as when we're using our wash mitt, you wanna keep nice consistent lines. And as you can see there, the soap scum is gone and we've got a beautiful protected shine. You can see just in this section, the soap scum is gone. We've got a nice deep rich shine and an added layer of protection thanks to evaporate. We're gonna finish off the rest of the car and then take you to the next step. So anywhere that gets a high level of traffic, like the front bumpers, the top of the hood, anything like that, it doesn't hurt to have an even better level of protection. So after we've done our Jay Leno's Garage Evaporate, um, we're gonna use this Car Pro Reload. What this actually does is it puts a silica sealant um, and builds one more step of protection on the hard, uh, basically, you know, the high abrasion areas of the car. It won't stop rock chips or anything like that, but you know, every, every little bit helps. This says it's a water and dirt repellent that lasts up to about six months. And because, like I said, we're in the dusty environment of Las Vegas, any kind of dirt repellent that doesn't allow the dirt to stick to the paint is a big plus. So again, super easy, give it a good shake to prime, apply it over the hood and do a nice one wipe for each. So after the paintwork is pretty much complete, we find ourselves back at the wheel. Now, one thing I do want to point out is there's some overspray on the spokes of the wheel from the soap, which is perfectly fine. We can get like an all-purpose cleaner and uh, you know, a dark towel, give it one quick spray and just remove any of that overspray or that soap scum that's left over. And finally, we'll talk about tire shine. Now, we have two options for tire shine. We have the traditional Jay Leno's Garage tire shine. This is uh, actually a really good type of tire shine because it's got an SPF component in it. Now, I wanna talk briefly about um, kind of the different versions of tire shine there are. A lot of times, obviously, like people just grab the Armor All off the AutoZone counter. Uh, the thing is, is uh, Armor All and things like that, and Meguiar's the hot shine, stuff like that, it looks really good and really wet for a brief amount of time. The problem is, is not only does it sling down your paint because it stays um, so wet for so long, but it also actually dries out the rubber of your tires. So you'll find that you get less use out of them than if you didn't use them. So a tire shine that has SPF in it, UV protection, or some kind of layer that's actually not only going to make your tires look good, but also provide a layer of protection, again, especially because of the heat that we experience here in Las Vegas, that's a plus. So we have the tire shine. <clears throat> we also have the Jay Leno's Garage Tire and Trim Care. This one is more of a um, vinyl, rubber, and trim piece protectant. I'm going to show you a clip here of the bedsides on my truck where you can see that there's dirt actually clung to that the pores of that bedside plastic panel. So this is what I would use to clean and protect that because this actually puts a layer that helps prevent water, scum, and, uh, and dirt from sticking to the finish. Because this car is so well taken care of and protected, we're just gonna opt to use the tire shine today. It stays in the garage, it doesn't do that many miles, and definitely not in any kind of inclement weather. So again, um, we're gonna put our tire shine to stream, give it a shake, and put it on our pad here. I'm gonna overlay a picture here on the screen of some tire shine that we applied to another car about a week ago, and you can see exactly how it holds up after about a week. But once you put it on your pad, you wanna make sure that you don't touch the paint with it. If you do, you wanna immediately move, remove that with a microfiber towel. But you just wanna work the tire shine into the tire, like so. Again, you wanna be careful not to get any on the rim or the paintwork. No big deal if you do, just take your dark towel and wipe it off the wheel. Last and final step, if you're only doing the exterior, is obviously the glass. You know, the glass is where anybody that gets in to drive, that's the first thing you're gonna look through is the glass. So you wanna make sure that you use some kind of good streak-free glass cleaner with a clean, lint-free microfiber towel to clean your glass. Again, all the products that we use will be linked down in the description below. Please feel free to leave a comment or direct message me on Instagram if you have any questions about processes, things of that nature that we went over today in this video. Let's take a look at the final product.
Again, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the drone shots. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next video. Ryan Little. <laughs> Yoga!